so what we're going to talk about today now is we're going to talk about the different types of audiences that you can have in a persuasive speech. And then I'm going to talk to you about um, what we can do to adapt to those audiences and maybe attention getters that we might have for those audiences. Okay, so there are three types of audiences. People who agree, people who disagree, or people who don't know and don't care and or don't care, right? So those are the three main types of audiences. Your audience can be made up of a variety of people from those three types. So in an audience, you might have two or three people who agree, you might have two or three people who disagree, and you may have like five people who are like uninformed and don't have an opinion. And you might have one person who's like, I don't really care, this isn't interesting, and they're kind of checked out, right? So that would be like a mixed audience, but a mostly like what we call neutral. So we call them agree, disagree, and neutral, okay? Audience attitude towards your topic matters because you wanna think about what you can do to adapt to that audience. You're not gonna do the same thing to an audience who agrees as you will to an audience that disagrees. You shouldn't. In fact, there are things you should do for each one of those three audiences, and I'm about to tell you what they are. First, with an audience that agrees with you, you have an audience that has already got formed an opinion and has an opinion that's positive. That's great. You therefore don't need to basic information, like you can assume they have basic information on this topic, but they may not have more advanced information. So you may wanna look for more current information on this topic or information that's more unusual for an audience that agrees. And you might make sure that you have accurate information that makes you look um, uh, in a way to kind of get them in more engaged. And finally, you wanna make sure that you offer them actions they can take so that they can become even more committed to the topic. So let's just take the topic of uh, testing on animals since that's one that um, we're familiar with. So animal cosmetic testing is a problem that we've just established. And it's a problem that affects everybody because everybody might use shampoo, everybody might use soap. So it's relevant to everyone, but not everyone might even think that it's relevant to them. Um, but people who agree with you do. So you could provide them, rather than providing them statistics or information they already might know, you wanna come up with something new, like there's a new study, or you might say, you know, new ways that people label um, products to let people know. And then you wanna do things like have them know about this app. And you can say, there's an app out there that you can use when you go grocery shopping, and it will help you identify products that test. You notice that I didn't spend a ton of time establishing the significance of this problem because people who agree already agree with the significance. It's important to do that, however, with people who are neutral or who don't know. So if you have an audience that's neutral or doesn't know on a topic, you can't jump right into talking about the app. You have to give them information because they don't either they don't know or they don't care. And you need to explain why it's relevant to them. So with a neutral audience, you want to first establish your credibility give them background information, don't make assumptions that they know, explain what testing is, how many animals it affects, and you wanna establish the significance. You have a real opportunity with a neutral audience, by the way. That's one of the most malleable audiences. It's the audience that you have the most sway on because they haven't set their opinion yet on this topic. So you can make the most motion and change um, on them out of any of the audiences. And so establishing credible information, giving them background, and then, and then maybe give them actions. But you know what? If they're neutral, you may or may not get there. And that's okay. But it's okay to say, okay, I'm gonna try to give them information to act, but don't expect big actions. And then finally, we have audience that disagrees. With the audience that disagrees um, and with audience that's neutral, you might wanna provide a two-sided argument. And what does this mean? This doesn't mean you say, here are the good reasons, here are the bad reasons, right? You don't say animal testing is good for these following reasons and animal testing is bad for these following reasons. You don't do that. What you do is you say, you reference the argument against you. Like some people say that animal testing is important because it avoids human disease. 
However, I say, and then you answer it and you say, we've done the testing. If we've already established that this cosmetic, you know, is safe on human eyes, why do we continue to test that same product over and over and over again? We should have minimal testing guidelines where we, we have testing for it when it first comes out. But then once the product's been on the market, there's no more testing on that product. We need to have minimal guidelines that limit the amount of testing to the absolute necessary limit, right? And you explain and you say that, and you explain that, you know, people might say that it's necessary for medicine, but if you've already established this research and it's well known, why do we continue to test? Because we do, right? Or we don't, but some, pro some companies do. And you could say, there are alternatives to testing on animals and here they are. And there are significantly safe, what they call vegan products out in the market that don't test. So why don't we use those, right? Um, if they're pressured, companies will find alternatives. Uh, and so what I've just done is I've referenced the major argument. And if you don't reference the major argument with people who disagree, that's gonna be like the elephant in the room because you'll be talking about how important it is not to test but you won't have addressed the thing that they are most aware of and they're not gonna believe you and they're not gonna move. So um, to review the three types of our audiences, people who agree, people who don't know or don't care and people who are disagreeing. In all cases, but especially with that, the audience that is, doesn't, doesn't care, the final thing you wanna do with all audiences is talk about why this is relevant to them. So why should they care? How does this impact them? Because people who are, I don't care, should know that it's important how we treat animals because that actually says how we're gonna treat other humans. And also what you put in your body or on your body is going to impact you. And you need to be aware that um, you are actually endorsing this action if you don't do anything. Like you're allowing this action to be happen if you don't do anything. And you might talk about how uh, products that test on animals are actually not any safer than products that don't test on animals. And the same companies that test on animals are also likely to put chemicals in their product that don't aren't good for you. So if you don't care about animals, fine, but you should care about yourself because those chemicals are often associated with the same companies, right? So you could kind of do that. And now you've told people why they should care. So three types of audiences, three different approaches. And um, you should choose wisely because if you choose to tell people who don't agree with you all about the app, they're not gonna go for it.